Well, welcome to the Thursday edition of the Don and Cherry's Grapevine podcast. And, Dad, we're going to talk about one of your all-time favorites, Pat Burns. You know, it's funny thing is, well, we, we, get, it, we get into him not being voted in uh, the Hall of Fame while he was alive. That, that is one of the great. I mean, he wanted, he, that, when he was alive, he wanted to be in the Hall of Fame. And uh, that, would, that, 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 was, that goes beyond hockey. That's just being absolutely mean. You know I, mean? I don't think they were mean. I think they're stupid. Eh? Stupid. Yeah, yeah okay. it's stupid because I don't think that they they meant to be mean. And then they voted him in the next year. What did his coaching career? Did he coach? Did he improve his coaching uh, that summer? And I said, I will never do another uh, coach's corner. I went down when he got coached the year in uh, Rochester, uh, in Boston. And we went at center ice and I give him the trophy and that. He was quite proud of that. He won. He won uh, uh, Coach of the Year in three different cities. That'll never be, ha- never happen again. And um, he won, yeah, Montreal in '89. That was his first year. Yeah, and he went to the, he went to the, um, went to the finals. Yeah, but you kept shaking Dougie Gilmore's hand, and they lost to Calgary. Yeah, I wonder even. Yeah. Yeah, he mentioned that on the Grapevine show when we had him on. Yeah. Uh, he says, well, I was looking to shake your hand, but you didn't look for me. He, said, he was joked. Then he won it in 93 with the Leafs. Yeah. And, and he won it uh, with 98 Boston. with Boston. So he won it with all original six teams. Too. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's pretty tough with, to get a job. But he was a great guy. And uh, I think they named an arena after him. Too. Yeah, they did. Um, in Let me see where it is. In, um, in Stansted, Quebec, they built, uh, they built a rink. Floor. You were saying that he didn't want to. He didn't want to talk about that he was in the, the police department. Yeah, we we were um we like what I, when he came in like with all the grapevine shows we I kind of go over the questions with him and stuff like that. He was really nice and uh, he said um, I said you talk about any he, he says I really don't want to talk about the, my days with the police and you know so if he didn't want to talk about it yeah. that's fine and then but he talked about a, a time where he was doing a uh, sports illustrator was doing a big article on him and they wanted to focus that he was on a policeman and he, he, you know, he did a little bit. He says that he, on the grapevine show, he says, I talked a little bit. And then he says, they took a million pictures and he says, they used the first one. And he goes, so then they said, they won't, he go, we want to go to the top of where the, you know, shoot down on the city of Montreal. And so he got in a car with them and he saw they had like a police hat at a billy club and he says what's that and he says well we just want you and he said no I, I i'm not going to do that so they took a couple of pictures and then i think he said in the that the sports illustrated did some um cartoons of him as a police officer and he was yeah. really upset about we, that. i think he was proud of being a policeman i think that the, the story he we were talking one time i said what's the worst thing no homicide's not bad you go there and he says the worst is dom- domestic violence and I, he says, when you go between a husband and a wife, he says, and he said, the, the first one I went to, the, the husband was beating up the wife. And he says, I went in and arrested him, put the handcuffs on, and the wife hit her more over the head with a frozen turkey, knocked him cold. But uh, he was a great guy. We should, well, we'll talk more about him, but uh, you have a great clip of... Uh, the well, time it's Pia Stani. Right. We were, uh, so I remember uh, you, you, you had talked about, uh, you talked to him about this a lot, of, um, even um, before the show, you talked quite a bit. And I think the first time people really kind of got to recognize him was he was the assistant coach to Bert Templeton. I don't think he, I didn't know that at the time, but you know, it caught Bert Templeton. He was a great coach junior coach and it cost him his career yeah so this is i you know i've heard a lot of people talk about the punt but this is i've never heard this version i've never heard and it so either. and it's first hand right what happened so here's pat burns uh, on the grapevine show and he's talking about uh, the punch up and pinch standing where he was an assistant coach Congratulations on a great year and coach of the year. You did it. You did a great job. Thank you very much, Don. And uh, it was an honor to win the same trophy you won. The only thing is, I get fired right after. So you got to be a little <laughs> careful. <laughs> now listen, we got to get it right in. We will get into the AHL and the NHL later, but we got to get in right now to that junior game. I think that was just something. A lot of people. I don't know whether people know or not. You were the assistant coach there. Now tell us about the whole deal leading up to that schmazzle. At one point in time, we had to beat the Russians by a certain score, and uh, I felt something before the game. Um, I remember that the, the coach on the other side, I can't remember his name right now, not that I want to, but 
uh, he was coming into the dressing room, and I told Bert, I said, there's something going on. I said, there, there, there's a feeling that, uh, you know, you get that coach's feeling. I said, I don't like the way they're, they're, they're reacting or they're acting. And Bert says, well, so we're going to play the game anyways. What else can we do? So uh, uh, things were going well. I think we had to beat him by four goals, and things were going well for us. We had Theron Fleury, who plays for Calgary this year. We had Santa Pass. We had those guys. And all of a sudden, at one point in time, somebody slashed one of our goalies. And I remember this referee was a Norwegian referee, if I can recall quite clearly. And I guess this guy had never seen this caliber of hockey before in his life. And uh, this was a pretty, you know, how the Russian and Canadian yeah. games get going. And of course the hacking started and he wasn't calling nothing. So at one point in time a fight started and uh, some pushing, not really a fight, some pushing started between Everett Santa Pass, Theron Fleury and Mike Keane who plays for uh, our team. And then uh, Lord and behold, the uh, the Russian coach, I remember the kid's name, I think it's Davidov is his name, went over the boards, we're in number seven, went over the boards, went into it. So I tried to grab on to big Luke Richardson. I remember that he was right in front of me, and of course he's a bull. Doge. He just sort of said, I'm going, and that was it. And Bert was trying to hold, I had Steve Chase on, and I had um, Luke Richardson, and there was nothing to do there. And of course they went, and what could you do? Uh, we sat there and watched it go, and then the lights went out, power failure, and then... Um, oh. <laughs> that, was a scary part. that was a scary part. I think uh, when the lights went back on, we saw these guys with the long coats and the dogs going around with the muzzles and everything. Yeah. And guys, just the kids are saying to me, oh, what's happening, coach? And I'm going, I don't well, know. I remember the night it happened. Everybody was saying the same thing. Oh, it's a black mark and everything like that. Murray Costello and all our left wing guys over here. It's a black mark. And then all of a sudden they saw the Canadian people were for our guys. And uh, what the heck could you do if you had Nothing. 20 Russians out there on five guys? I think you said 1.2, you know, if your son was on that team, you know, what would you do? Like, you know, you had, uh, you know how brawls can, nobody, they sort of said that we should have prepared the team, but how many times you went in your team and say, hey guys, in case there's a brawl tonight, we have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the, coach, the coach never says that. Never. I don't think it's, it's, it's something that you ever say. And I think that was one of the knocks that they said that the team should have been prepared for that. But. So there, Dad, that's uh, Pat Burns' version of what happened in uh, Punch of Peace. It's not his version. That's what happened in Peace. That's not his version. That's exactly what happened. So, you know, you just look at his coaching career. He had, uh, you say, three Jack Adams uh, awards. It's unbelievable. Which I don't it, think anybody else has No, ever. I don't think any, nobody's won three. I, I kidded him. I said, I don't think uh, I won in, in the American Hockey League twice. And uh, I think he had something. So and he, and he won one Stanley Cup. He had over 500 wins. And, and, and um, you know, and he, and he, he was, was great for hockey, great for hockey. And it was what it was funny. Eh? You were saying he was one of those guys that when he was in Montreal, he was French. And when he was in Boston, he was Irish. Yeah. Well, he looked like an Irish guy. You know, he's big and heavy. That's what happened to me when I went to Boston. Uh, I was I was fortunate The Southie run the league the, and uh, or run Boston. And um, I just happened to wear a, a, a green hat. I just happened to have a green uh, pea cap with a tassel on top, and none belongs to me that that's what they wear in, in Southie all the time. But he uh, he he looked like he looked like he should be. He's big and pretty heavy, and uh, well, in Boston too, he looked like a, he would have been a police officer in yeah. Boston. You know, like that that you know, and they have a lot of respect for the police in Boston. Oh, they did the ever and they, were they tough? I remember one time uh, they stole um, a kid stole us one of our sticks, and two policemen had him. And got the stick back, and they had him by the arm, and he made the kid made a mistake of uh, kicking, you know, kicking the the policeman, and the guy <laughs> he had one of those little billy, and he just cracked him over the head. You couldn't believe, and I, geez, you know, and I I was there, and I said, gee, yeah, you want your stick back or you want your keep quiet? We take care of this guy. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, you didn't fool around with the Boston no, Gardens. Oh, Boston. Remember that they had a picture of dragging a guy out and his head was on a his head was on a on a stairs. Bing, 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 bing all the way down. Boy, you didn't fool. When they said to move, you moved. That that's for sure. So he, you know, and then you know, unfortunately Pat got sick and he he, he had cancer and yeah. then, then he had to retire and then he he told everybody that, you know, the cancer was inoperable and you know, it was going to be terminal and the Hockey Hall of Fame didn't... Uh, I don't think they met. I think they were just stupid. And uh, they figured he'd last or something. Because he really wanted to be in the uh, Hall of Fame while he was alive. And I know his wife did too. And Yeah, but there's no excuse for that, Dad. I mean, I, you can say there's stupid stuff like that. But that that's, there's no excuse for that. 
No, I guess not. And uh, it's one, you know, one thing, as I said before, it says his coaching record didn't improve. Yeah, the, the year summer. after he died, you know. So. Now, you were saying that you enjoyed watching his practices. I like the practices. His uh, morning skates were the same as mine. He never used a whistle. He, he, everything was the same. He, he repetition, repetition all the time. He just point to the corners, and, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful to watch, and uh, he did must have done something right because he won an awful lot of games. You know, and looking back, like I was a Toronto fan when he was coaching, but boy, those were like the glory years of not winning the Stanley Cup with him and Dougie Gilmore. And he looked one, back at the bench. He, he looked, he looked good, good, too. You know, the one game I, I remember, and he went I went crazy, was remember in Game 7, and that was the same year they went to, I guess it would have been 93, that they beat... Uh, uh, they beat um, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, and and because Detroit was heavily favored, right? Borchewski, I think. A little Borchewski scored yeah. a tipping goal, and, and then you know who set that up? I remember Dougie Gilmore had it, and he passed it over to I think the right defenseman. Would that be Gill? Might have been Gill or was it McCowan? Yeah, McCowan. I think it was McCowan, and he blasted on the net, and uh, the little Russian was standing in front of the net, and he just tipped it in, boy. And did they go nuts? Remember, uh, and up on up on uh, 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 Mike Mur- uh, Mike Murphy went nuts, and Fletcher went nuts, and yeah. I mean, and then after that, then they played St. Louis. Oh, uh, did they? I, I yeah, remember it. that was the one. Remember Dougie got scored in double overtime. Oh, wait, on C- Curtis Joseph. Curtis Joseph, and that went seven games. Oh, that was a terrific. Uh, I mean, Dougie went one way, went the other, and I thought he was going to go out the other way, and so did uh, Curtis. And he come back and and tucked her home. Boy, that was something. Well, that went seven games too. And boy, boy the boy, the fans loved that Leaf team. I mean, cause they were, they were, you know, they scored a lot of goals, but they were tough. And then then they, they went, were tough too. And then they went and played that L.A. and and thing. But yeah, that's that's what I remember with that. that for the favorite Leafs, you know, oh, that era was, was was I think was Pat Burns era was the Leafs. That was that was. You know, and he was good too. I remember uh, his assistant coach was Mike Kitchen. Remember, right? Yeah, yeah and, and they went on the ice, and I don't know. He was, he was, that, that was that was great hockey. That was great hockey. And you're right. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a red line. Whatever it was, maybe yeah, and maybe it was the seventh game. I don't know. It was it was uh, great hockey to watch. You know, it's the funny thing is that Wayne Gretzky uh, is the second greatest hockey player. I ever saw Won't we'll Go Bobby is the first one I ever saw. It was the best I ever saw. But Gretzky was I I, I love I love when Gretzky got uh, two thousand points or something like that. And they said to him, Oh yeah, it was wide open hockey and I loved the answer he gave. And I don't see anybody else doing it. Didn't you say I don't know if you told the story, but one time you were with uh, uh Mr. Gretzky, Walter Walter Gretzky. Oh and that a was kid a kid came up and said, They Mr. Cherry, who's the greatest hockey player ever? <laughs> and I remember it was at a lacrosse game. Walter really liked lacrosse, and uh, and Wayne, I guess, played with lacrosse. But so we went and stood in the penalty box, and I saw them come out, and little wee kids cross-checking and banging, and I said, holy smokes, this is really something. So we're walking along, and a kid come up, and he's, who's the greatest hockey player you ever saw? And um, you know, I'm really stuck at it. Here's Walter Gretzky walking beside me. And I said, I think that Wayne Gretzky is the greatest hockey player playing today. And Walter to me said, you know, you should have been a politician. <laughs> so, but you were saying, we're talking about it, that uh, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky was the guy, if you, if you talk to, well, you can't talk to Pat now, but when, he, when I talked to him, that uh, he said that the Wayne Gretzky, and if it hadn't been for Wayne Gretzky, he'd never made the National Hockey League. Yep, and we have a clip here of uh, of Pat talking about uh, that yeah. on the Grapevine Show. Now let's get to you went to, after that. You went to Gretzky's team, right? Well, I I was in Hull before Wayne bought the team. I was uh, the city of Hull owned and operated the team. I was two years coach there before, and then uh, I had heard a rumor during the summer that Wayne Gretzky wanted to buy the Hull Olympics, and I sort of laughed at it. I figured, you know, what was Wayne Gretzky going to come and do in Hull, Quebec? And then the next thing you know, he did, became owner, and uh, I met with him at the draft in Toronto, and he said, uh, hey, look, I've been had some people following you, and I want you to stay on. And I stayed on for two years after that, and then uh, I ended up in the American League. He with the gave Sherman you Canadians. advice to keep going, eh, the National? Yeah, he did, because at one point in time, you know, I was a policeman for 16 years, and uh, I didn't know what to do at one point in time, and I didn't know whether I should stay in the game or go back to the blue, and... Uh, he said, hey, I think you, you have the things to do it. And he says, I've been watching you go. And, I, and he says, I think you should stick to the game. And uh, I took his advice, and I'm glad he did. And I thank him for it. You went uh, with the American Hockey League. It's a great league. 
That's right. I think the American Hockey League is a good league. I think it's it's changed much. I think there's a lot of kids playing it now, and it's a it's a good stepping stone. The NHL. It's a, the bus rides are hard, but I think the uh, uh, the game itself has changed, and it's and it, it's a much better game. The NHL. Well, it's, it, it teaches you a little character too. You just don't walk into it. Oh. You don't go into Rochester's uh, whistling, that's for sure. <laughs> My old team, by the way. Thank you very much. And, uh, what was your first thought when you got a call from Serge? Well, uh, I was sort of, I, I didn't know what was really going on. Ha everything happened so quick. And uh, when Serge called me and, uh, and, and asked me to meet with him, I went down. And uh, it was like going into something that you weren't sure of. I think that the team had 100 and... Uh, uh, 15 points or whatnot. Uh, we had 115, excuse me, they had 103 points and that, that hung over my head from day one. Uh, everybody was saying, well, he'll never make 103 points, he'll never make 103 points. And we had it went off to a shaky start, as you remember. Yeah. Uh, Media was on you. They had me fired at Christmas. They were Everything taking a pool. On. Oh yeah, they had a pool going. I had bets up in the press gallery and... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, eh? Uh, not because Serge was here, but I think Serge was very good to me too. He said, uh, don't worry about it. Just hang in there. Uh, if we hired you, we know we can. You can do the job. And uh, hey, we we hung in there, and we were like you said, two wins short of a Stanley Cup. You know, Tim. And one guy I want to talk about. Uh, maybe next week we'll talk about that should be in the Hall of Fame. And I guess, uh, and and absolutely, we talked about Ricky Milton. We talked about uh, Pat Burns, but uh, Pat Verbeek, the little ball of hate. I mean, it's unbelievable that he's not in the Hall of Fame. And next week. We'll talk about the guy that lost his thumb. Yeah, they tell that whole story and then how he got mad at you on Coach's uh, yeah. uh, The Great Point Show, which is funny. And then I think about the other thing we got to talk about, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit, was coming up on Good Friday and the Good Friday Massacre oh, between uh, the Montreal uh, Canadiens and the Quebec Nordiques in Game the 6. The greatest rivalry in any sport. And, you know, Boston, Montreal, and, and uh, Toronto and Detroit and all that stuff. There's never been a rivalry of hate like there was in the Montreal Quebec Nordiques. And boy, it was something to watch. And uh, next week, it should be good. Yeah, and if, just quickly on about, about that thing, funny is uh, Pat Verbeek, he played for in Petrolia, you know, just south yeah. of Cernia, and that's where the Hunters were from. Another guy. And, 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 yeah, I there's said, Dale, another guy that should be in the Hall I of said Fame. to Dale, I said to Dale one time, I, I remember I said to him, you know, he's done, he's done a lot for hockey. And him and Mark and Dick. I got a call from Dick the other day too. He was he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. And uh, I said, "How come you're not in the Hall of Fame?" He said, "I'm not their kind." Yeah, and Made it was me feel good. Yeah, and the funny thing was, and that uh, in that Good Friday massacre, that I think Dale started the first one, the first round of it, and then I think Mark started the second round of it. And the hundred boys were on the on the move. Yeah, and they even kind of. They really didn't fight, but they 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 uh, grabbed each other. Did you ever see two brothers fight? I did. I saw the um, the, uh, the uh, Huckle brothers, and uh, I, it was unbelievable. Uh, and we'll talk about that sometime. Uh, it was Sandy and I think Freddie, Fred. And I go, <laughs> there's two brothers fighting at center ice. We have to talk about that someday. Okay, so that'll be next week. We're going to talk about the Good Friday massacre. We'll talk about Pat Verbeek and uh, whatever else comes up over the next little while.